Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number two, Natural Language Processing 1. In this very first section of the Natural Language Processing lecture, we will talk about basic linguistics. And talking about linguistics, we want to think of what are the things, the constituents of a language that transport meaning. And the smallest unit we will find there are the so-called phones. These are distinct speech sounds, any speech sound, regardless of whether this sound carries already any meaning or is critical to the meaning of words. As soon as this sound really determines the meaning of a word, then it's not only a phone, then it's a so-called phoneme. And a phoneme thereby is the smallest abstract cognitive unit of, so uh, of sound in a language that is able of conveying a distinct meaning. And in English, you distinguish around 42 phonemes. So you have vowels, you have consonants, you have semi-vowels, you have diphthongs. So it's 42 overall. And to look at an example, of course, here we have the uh, phoneme S and R, and they are in the beginning of a word. And of course, they make a difference if you say sing or ring. Or if you look at phonemes at the end of a word, for kiss and kill, of course, this makes a huge difference whether you are using the double S or the double L, which of course are two letters. However, they produce a specific sound. So therefore, these are phonemes as the really, really smallest units within a language. So now we know what are the sounds, but we are usually dealing with words in languages and we have to know how these words might be constructed. And what are the laws that govern the, the, the construction of correct words? This usually is performed by morphology. Morphology is the study of the internal structures of the formation of words and how they can be modified. Usually it determines how to parse complex words into their single components. Take the word morphology. So for example, morphology is constituted from a word stem, which is morph and a suffix, which is ology. If it would be before the stem, so if ology would be a prefix, then we have another way to compose this word and to create a new meaning starting with a stem. We will see these rules of morphology and how this works then in the next section of the lecture. However, we have now identified words which are created from sounds and sounds again if they are discriminative if they make a difference in the meaning for a word then they are phonemes but what is a word okay a word usually is the smallest independent unit of a language what means independent in that sense independent of course means it's not dependent on other words and it can be separated from other units and of course it can also change its position within the sentence. Of course, then the meaning changes, but a word can be put on different positions in a sentence. Take the example, the man looked at the horses. The S there is only a plural marker, which makes sense in combination with a noun horse to receive its meaning. So S of course, then is not a word. Horses, for example, is a word. It can occur on other positions and it stands completely on its own. So this is a word S the smallest independent unit in a language. If you take now words together, you form a set which is called or referred to as a vocabulary. So a vocabulary consists of a set of words. Any text that you have, which means this is a composition of a sequence of words, and all these words stem them from your vocabulary, which is the set of available words. So now we have words, we have vocabulary, and we have a text. Overall, if we look at the set of all possible texts and then collect all of the words that are used there, we come up with a language, which means this is the set of all possible texts. And the last term we want to introduce here in this very, very short lecture of basic linguistics is the term of discourse. And discourse usually refers to the study of linguistic units larger than a single statement, which means you look at an entire paragraph or you look at 
a coherent sequence of sentences which might be even longer than a paragraph they might also be an entire page or an entire chapter of a document so this then the analysis of that or the study of that is referred to discourse however we want to start with the more simple things and with the smaller things so in the next section of the lecture we will talk about morphology 